Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. So you can see behind me, I don't have the Arch logo anymore. I have some tatami mats and that's because I am moving to a new apartment soon. So there is a little bit of a chaos at my place right now. But nevertheless, I decided here to record a video for you guys. And we are going to actually explore in this video the new May 2022 ISO for Arch with the new Arch install script, which was officially released in this ISO. And it's a new version of the Arch install script, which was already available in the ISO previously, but it has been revamped with a new interface and a very nice menu layout. So in this video, I'm going to show you basically the quick install, how you can install actually Arch with the Battery Festival system with the default options. There are many, many more options available in the script, which I'm going to explore in other videos. Otherwise, this will be too long. But for now, this should actually do it. So without further talking, let's jump into the video. So here I booted up the May 2022 ISO for Arch and as I said in the intro, in this video we are going to install it with the new Arch install script which was officially released here in the May 2022 ISO. Now I'm going to maybe do a little bit more videos about this installer. Today is just going to be a general installation video on how you can install Arch basically with the script in a very quick way. And I'll have to study a little bit this script and see what I can do as a videos in the future because this script allows you for more granular controls over the installation, but it remains to be seen. I'm gonna study this script a little bit more in depth in the future. For this video, I'm just gonna do a basic install. So now I am actually installing on a real laptop this is actually another laptop connected via SSH and I had to give the root password to my laptop in order to be able to connect via SSH and I had to also of course connect to the internet otherwise I couldn't connect via SSH here so if I type in IP space say here in the terminal you see I have here the interface number four is my Wi-Fi so it's called WLAN 0 and in order to connect to this Wi-Fi on the laptop before I typed in IWCTL, which is the utility we use here on the Arch ISO to connect to Wi-Fi. And you can see we have now the IWD prompt. So I can type in here station and then WLAN 0 because that's the name of the device that I have and then connect. And then the name of the network I'm connecting to, which is in my case EF Tech. 5, this is the name of the Wi-Fi here at home, and once I hit enter, it asked me for my passphrase, and once I entered the passphrase, I was brought back here to the IWD prompt, to which I can just hit on the keyboard control D to go back to the root arch ISO prompt. So I clean up the terminal, and now I can type in LSBLK. And you can see there I have one SSD drive called NVMe 0N1. So that's the drive I have in my laptop. This is actually the laptop I usually use to make videos, but I decided actually to wipe it out and install from scratch. And I'm using here actually SSH through a Mac uh, that I have done a video for last week about Arch on ARM. And so I'm gonna install it this way today on the laptop and I'm gonna finish up the video on the new installation afterwards. So as you probably already know, we have the Arch install script that we can start just by typing in here, Arch install and hit enter. And the first thing it's going to do, is going to test the connectivity of the mirrors. And now it's putting up the script. So you can see the script now looks very new, very fresh. It has a new UI, so to say it's more like menu based and it's a little bit easier to let's say follow. So we go here step by step. So the first step here is to select the language and it's already English selected. So that's fine with me. And we can move down here and select the keyboard layout. Now, again, I don't have a US keyboard here on this machine. So I'm gonna hit enter and select here a keyboard layout from the list. But I see mine is not there, but you can see there on the bottom press slash to search. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna search for the pattern on my keyboard, which is the DE keyboard. There's one of the DE keyboards. And you can see it pops up here, the different keyboards having DE in the string. So the one I have is actually DE underscore CH. That's the Swiss German keyboard I have here. So I'm gonna select that and hit enter. Now select the mirror region. By the way, I really like this menu. It's very easy to see and I find it's very intuitive and very elegant at the same way. So good job there. 
So I'm going to select the mirror here. So I'm going to hit enter. And again, I'm going to search. So I'm going to press the forward slash here and type in here Switzerland. So that's the one. So I'm just going to select it. And you can see it pops up there, mirror region, Switzerland. So select our drives. This is the next step. So let's go there. So here we are basically offer a menu from devices available in the system. Now, the first one, as you can see, it's NVMe 0N1, which is my SSD. It's about one terabyte in space. And the second one here is SDA. This is actually the USB stick from which actually this root ISO is booting up. So this is not the one I want. The one I want is the first one, NVMe 0N1. If you have multiple drives and you want to select multiple drives, you can do so by hitting the space bar. But in my case, I just hit enter here on the first drive. And now we can go ahead and select the disk layout. So let's go ahead and do this. So select what to do with each individual drive or wipe all selected drive and use a best effort default partition layout. So select what to do with each individual drive. Basically, you'll have to go in and manually do everything yourself. So you basically have to create the newer partitions. You can select EFI partitions, but I'm going to do a special video about this because it has a lot of options and I want to study them a little bit more before I offer you a video on that. So for this video, I'm going to go for the second option because it's still offering us some options for our partition. So I'm going to select here and hit enter. And here we can select which file system we want to have for our installation. So I'm going to go with BadRFS because the other file system are a little bit more straightforward. So with BadRFS, you have a little bit more options to configure. So I'm just going to hit enter here. And then would you like to use BadRFS subvolumes with a default structure? Now, we don't have any clue here what is actually the default structure offer in this script. So we have the options to say yes or no. So I'm going to select yes in this case because I want to show you what the default subvolume structure is. Maybe in an update to the script, it would be probably helpful to know which subvolumes are going to be created by default. So I'm going to hit yes here. And it's asking us, would you like to use BadRFS compression? I want to say yes, absolutely. And it's going to use, by the way, ZSTD compression so that you know. And now we can also set an encryption password here, but I'm not going to do this here. Select the bootloader. Uh, we can select here system boot, which is already selected, or we can change this also to grub. As you can see there, would you like to use grub as a bootloader instead of system boot? This is really up to you here. I'm going to leave it actually to no, that's fine. Now for the swap here, you can see it's set to true, but we don't know if it's actually a swap partition or if it's using zero. So let's hit enter here. And you can see it's asking us, would you like to use a swap on zero? So that was the default. And so I'm going to hit yes again. The next step is to select the root password. So let's do this. So you can see here, enter root password, leave blank to disable root. So I'm going to actually put the password because I'm used to work also with the root user. So I'm going to select one and hit enter. The password you're using seems to be weak. I know this is just for a demo. So I'm going to hit yes again and re-enter my password for verification. And now we can actually create an account for the system. So I'm going to hit enter here. And the username is going to be my name. And the password for the user, again, it's going to be a weak password. Sorry about that. This is just for demo. Retype it. And the user has been now created with its own password. Now we can also go here and create another user if we want. This is actually nice. But in my case, this is all I need. So I just can hit here, confirm and exit. And we are back in our menu. So the next step is to select the profile. So let's do this. So we have basically here four profiles available. We have desktop, which provides a selection of desktop environments and window managers. We have minimal, which is providing us basically with a very basic installation that allows you to customize Arch Linux as you see fit. So if you don't want to do a default customization here, you can just select this one and then build basically your desktop environment or window manager the way you want to. Server provides a selection of various servers packages to install and enable, for example, web servers and databases. Or the last profile here is Xorg. Install a minimal system as well as Xorg and graphics drivers. So you can 
select here the one you are looking for. In this video, as a demo purpose, I want to go with desktop because I want to show you what you can install as a desktop environment or window manager. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And so here we are giving a selection of desktop environments or window managers to install from. So we have Awesome, BSP, WM, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, Enlightenment, GNOME, i3, KDE, LXQT, Mate, Qtile, Sway, and XFCE4. I tested this out actually with i3 and it's going to install it with the LightDM Display Manager with the LightDM GDK Greeter, which is fine. And you're going to have a very, very light installation of i3 and it's working absolutely well. For this video though, I'm going to go with KDE because it's installing a little bit more packages. And let's have a look on how this script is going to install KDE, which packages it's going to install. And I believe the Display Manager is going to be STDM nevertheless. So let's hit enter here. And here we can choose our graphic drivers. So you can select here the one which is the one you need, basically. In my case, is AMD because the laptop I'm installing on, it's actually AMD. So I'm going to select the first option here. And now I'm back to my menu. So I can select now the audio profile. So we have the option here to have pipe wire or pulse audio. So the default profile is pipe wire. So if you want to have Pulse Audio here, you have to select it separately. So I'm going to select Pulse Audio in my case. And now we can select our kernels here from the menu again. So we have the choice between the Linux kernel, which is already selected by default. And we have also the Linux hardened kernel, the Linux LTS and the Linux Zen kernel. So LTS is the long term support and Linux Zen is the kernel which is actually supposed to work with most hardware out there. So you can actually install several kernels at the same time if you want, just by pressing the spacebar. But in my case, though, I'm going to go with the Linux kernel and then hit enter. Now, we can also select additional packages to install, but I'm not going to do this right now because I want to see how the script installs with KDE. So I'm just going to leave this empty, but if you want to install extra packages by any means, go ahead, enter this menu here and do so. Now, configure network, network not configure unavailable unless set up manually. So I'm going to actually set up in here. And I want to use Network Manager because it has an applet which might be used also in KDE, as it says also there in the description. So I'm going to select Network Manager and select the time zone. I think UTC is going to be fine, but I'm just going to press search here and I'm going to search for my location, which is Europe slash Zurich. And that's the one. So set automatic time sync NTP, that's the network time protocol, and it's already set to true, which is absolutely fine. So I'm going to let this alone. And additional repositories to enable, if you want, you can enable here multi-lib and testing. In my case, though, I don't need to do this because it's not going to be needed in my case. So I'm just going to press escape to go back to the main menu. Now we can choose to save the configuration here or install. I'm going to skip saving configuration and I'm going to go direct to install. So here is basically going to show us everything what's going to be done. And you can see here in the ButterFS section, the sub volumes that are going to be created. So we have basically a root sub volume, which is going to be mounted under the slash directory. That's the root directory. We have also the snapshot sub volume, which is going to be mounted under slash dot snapshots. We have the home sub volume, the log sub volume and the PKG sub volume. So these are the sub volumes th that are going to be created by default with the Arch install script. If you want to have different sub volumes, you will have to create them manually. And there is an option for that in that script. But as I said, I'm going to explore a little bit more options in another video. Otherwise, this one will become too long anyway. So let's go ahead here and hit enter to continue. And you can see that we have a timer in three seconds. It's going to start basically the work on the script by formatting, partitioning the drive and everything else. So there is no interaction here. This is going to do everything alone by itself. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys. And if there is anything happening in between, I'm going to be back here with you. Or if not, I'm going to be back here with you guys when the installation is finished. So I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. So here we are back, guys. The main installation is now finished. You can see actually it's asking us whether we want to shoot into the newly created installation and perform post installation configuration. So I'm going to say no in my case. I'm going to accept the defaults for now of the script. So I'm going to select no. And as you can see, installation is completed without any errors. You may now reboot. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in actually reboot and I'm going to pick up my laptop and I'm going to continue the video on my laptop because I will not be able to show you the bootloader, but I'm going to finish up the video on the new installation on the laptop itself. So I'm going to type in, in reboot and I'm going to see you guys here back in a second. So we are back here in the installation and let me pull up here the settings in KDE. I'm going to go here under about the system. So you can see here we have Arch Linux. This is KD Plasma version 524.5 and we are using the 517.5 kernel. And this is the laptop I usually use when I do Arch videos or Linux videos for that matter. So I have an AMD Ryzen 7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM and Radeon graphics. So when I booted up the machine, I was presented with the STDM display manager, which by default was actually going to Wayland. So if you're installing with the script, just make sure that if you want to actually log in via X11, you'll have to change that in the display manager settings. Now, let me close the window here and pull up the console. There are a couple of things that I still would like to show you. And let me go full screen actually and increase the font size so that you can see better. Because of the way I installed actually now Arch is that if I want to install packages, so for example, if I want to install git sudo pacman-s and then git, it's going to tell me that I don't have sudo privileges, as you can see here. And that's because the wheel group is not enabled. So I need to switch here in this case to the root user and I'll need to first assign the wheel group to my user by doing user mod dash a capital G and then wheel and then the username. And then I can also enable the wheel group. So I need to type in here editor equal the editor of your choice. I know by default in the installation there is nano installed. Vim is not installed, so you need to install it manually. And then vice sudo. And I'm going to go down here to the wheel group, which is down here. I'm going to select the first group here and basically enable it by removing the comment. Just so. And then Control O and Enter and Control X to exit the editor. Now, if I hit Control D on the keyboard and I close once the console and I reopen it again. Again, I go full screen here. And I'm going to type in sudo pacman dash s and git, type in my password, and now I can install just fine. So I'm going to install git because I want to install also another package just to test our badrfs file system here. So first of all, let me type in cat slash etsy slash fstab. And you can see here how the options for the badrfs file system are by default. So we have read and write, relay time, compress, ZSD, SSD, space cache, and subvol ID. So there are a couple of things here that we might want to change. I'm not going to do it in this video, but we could add, for example, here, no A time, which is no access time. It's going to improve the speed of written times also of the system. We could also add discard equal async for the SSD. It's going to improve the performance of the SSD as well. Now, these are optionals, but if you want to add them, you can add them if you want to. Now, we have also here, of course, the same option for other sub volumes as well. And if I type in, in here lsblk, you will see we have also ZRAM here, which is defined in four gigabytes in size. Now let's try and install TimeShift. And TimeShift is available in the AUR, so we need to basically clone the repository. And since we installed already Git, we can type in, in here git clone https colon slash slash and then aur.archlinux.org slash timeshift dash bin. I'm going to install the binary because it's a little bit quicker to install. And so now if I type in ls dash la, you can see we have there a timeshift dash bin directory. So I can move in there, cd timeshift dash bin. And now I can type in make pkg dash si. So this is going to take a moment here to install first the dependencies and then the binary. So I'm going to be back with you guys in a moment. And there you go. The installation was here very quick. You can see here optional dependencies. We have butterfs prox, which is already installed by default, and grab butterfs. Now, grab butterfs is not installed. We are using here systemd boot. And in order to use grab butterfs with timeshift, you need to change its configuration as well. There is a Git repository which explains you how to do that. So I'm going to go out here from the console for now. And I'm going to pull up here the search menu and type in here timeshift. And you can see we have here timeshift. 
So I need to authenticate. And we can configure time shift here. BadRFS is already detected, so I can hit next. The disk I have here, this is actually the ZRAM, so that's not the one I want. The disk I want is the NVMe 0N1P2, that's my root partition. And then hit next. You can select your schedule here. And Q groups are already enabled, so that's fine. And I can click finish. Now I can create one snapshot for my system. And the snapshot is there. So you could also expand this by the installing time shift auto snap from the AUR and then you will have snapshots every time there is an update for your system. I've already done that in my last installation video for Arch. So if you don't know how to do this, you just need to install basically time shift auto snap from the AUR and it's going to do the magic for you. So let me pull up one last time the console here. And let me type in free dash H to see the memory usage. I'm using here 2.3 gigabytes of RAM because OBS is also running in the background. But when I booted up called the machine before, it was using about 600 to 800 megabytes of RAM. So the installation itself, it's pretty light. But when you're opening up something like OBS Studio, it's going to eat a lot of memory nevertheless. So this is going to do it for this monthly install of Arch. We installed Arch here with the new Arch install script. I like this new version. It has a very nice menu. It's very easy to follow. It's very well designed. And as I said, I'm going to explore the other options a little bit more in depth in the coming weeks and maybe do another video on these options as well. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer you as soon as I can. So this was the Arch installation with the May 2022 ISO with the Arch install script. You can see here the default installation with the Badre Festival system. It's pretty compelling and it's really nicely executed. We have several sub volumes. We can install time shift. Everything works really well out of the box. As I said in the intro, there are many more options in the Arch install script. I'm going to explore them a little bit more in depth and see if I can make other videos about it. If you have any question about this video though, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching the video guys. If you liked it, please subscribe. If you haven't yet, that always helps me out and I'll see you very soon in the next video.